It's time to talk to Danny Bonanucci and Life Coach. You can call me right now at 1-800-252-1025. Phone lines are open. You can also email at lifecoach at kzok.com. Life Coach brought to you by our friends at Goldberg Jones Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. Let's talk to Rowan of Port Orchard. Hi, Rowan. Hi, hi, Danny. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Okay, so here's my question. Um, on Saturday, they had an open casting call for little kids in Seattle. Right. I took my daughter... They really liked her. They called me back yesterday. They want to sign her. But the thing is, they want me to pay for acting classes. Okay. And I I don't know what to do. I'm like, yeah, I know she needs them, I guess, but... Uh, well, here, do you want to know whether I'm think I'm endorsing whether you should give them uh, money to go to acting class? Would I you be giving the money? Because my daughter, when she outgrew being an adorable little baby, the casting agent actually said to her mother, you know, your daughter really doesn't have the tools required. Now, she wasn't saying here. Did they tell you what acting class? They didn't. They did not. They just said she needs acting lessons. Yeah, and they have acting classes there, so I kind of feel like it's a way to get money out. It is a way to get money. Here's, here's your answer right now. Absolutely never, and we've covered this a couple of times. I'm really glad you called, Rowan. Um, never give anybody money. Here's how show business works. Um, you go in, you go on an audition, you get an agent, or hopefully, and kids' agents, by the way, are they're, there's plentiful. They're plentiful, the kids' agents, because uh, there's so many young performers, You because know, a lot of them have talents and a lot of parents are wrong. So, uh, you know, you go out on these interviews and the agent gets the 10% commission, which has not changed in a bazillion years, when your child gets hired and makes money. So if your daughter, we'll call her Becky, uh, makes $1,000, you owe your agent a hundred, and the agent doesn't even wait. Oftentimes, and this is appropriate if it's going to sound bad, it's not. This is the way it's done. The check, for the most part, will go right to the agent, who will take their hundred out and re-issue uh, you a, a check for nine hundred dollars. But never give money ever for anything. When they say, if they know the photographer, you, if if they say, give us money and we'll get your headshots, well, everybody needs headshots. No, nope, you do need headshots eventually. I don't really know, but you do kind of need them. But they shouldn't be saying what photographer. You should go to the photographer and should pay them in that little swipey thing on the back of their phone. And that's how it's done. You never give out money before you're making money. Are you clear on that road? Do you have any other questions? Because this is, you know, I have a lot of expertise on the drugs, the alcohol, the cheating, the lying, and now the child actor. So do you have any other questions for you? Because I like talking to you. That's it. Is that it? No. The answer is no. Absolutely do not give them any money. There's no reason to ever. It's a scam. Uh, you know, I won't say the names of them, mostly because I can't remember, but those uh, companies that go around to uh, all over the place and they do open calls to malls and things like that, it's always a scam. Don't do it ever. So thank you very much for the call. And that's cool that you were helping out your daughter there. Thanks, Rowan. 800-252-1025. Call that number right now. If you've got a question for Danny Bonaducci, Life Coach, Love, Life, Work, the dependency, anything you've got going on, he can help you. 800-252-1025. Email lifecoach at kzok.com. Got a bunch of emails. There's one here from uh, Kathy in Burien. Yeah. She writes, my boyfriend and I are madly in love. And Good. we've discussed the probability that we'll be eventually getting married. Unfortunately, there's one hitch. We can agree on where we would like to live. He has pretty deep roots in the Seattle area, but most of my family lives in Connecticut. I've been trying to talk him into giving the Northeast a try, but I'm hoping this doesn't become a deal breaker. Can you mediate for us? I can. Um, first of all, and it's a nice fight to have because people have mothers and alma maters and things like that. But here's the thing for me. Anybody's that not willing to give up geography for me isn't the right one. I think my wife feels exactly the same way. I met my wife. She turned 18 in Sacramento. Moved down to California, lived there forever or for as long as she was going to. Met me and I got transferred to Philadelphia almost right away. And she looked scared as a deer in the headlights. I don't know if they look that scared. They just look paralyzed. But either way, she was like, oh my God, I don't even really know this guy that well. He wants to go cross country to some life I don't know. I'll never know anybody there. And her answer to that was, yep. And she got on the plane and went. Didn't know any. You'll give up. If you're if you're really in love, you'll, you'll say, hey, I got to go here. I got to go there. You too. And here's my answer for this. And if you're listening, I, I hope you take a, a you know, chance to listen to me carefully. You guys should be fighting to give that up. You know, I want to go here. I want to go there. What are we going to do? You give up. You're in love. Somebody else really needs this. That's what love is. You you know, you make alterations with your plans. So both of you should be wanting to say, all right, it's not that important to me. I won't go to Cleveland or wherever it was. And all right, I know I have uh, a lot of uh, things for to keep me here. 
I'll give them up for you because I love you. That's what you should be doing right now. Getting in line to give up this stuff because you're in love with the other person. And I think that's one of the only ways you'll find out if you were really and tr truly in love anyway. You're not in love with Cleveland or he's not in love with whatever high school he went Connecticut, to. Connecticut, even worse. Right. Man, it, their winters stink. Their winters stink. <laughs> <laughs> but either one of you should be ready to give it up for the, for the love of the other person. That's my opinion on this. I'm all romantic-y like that. If you've got a question for the Life Coach, 800-252-1025 or email lifecoach at kzok.com. Uh, here's a, a heck of an email from Courtney in Olympia. All right, I'm getting ready. I'm gearing up, strapping in. Courtney writes, I've been seeing this guy for six months and things have been going great. Uh -huh. But then he asked me something that I found shocking. His brother is planning a bachelor party in Las Vegas and my boyfriend actually suggested that we take a break the week of the party. Whoa, the balls on this guy. Everybody thinks that. Yeah. They don't say it. Yep. We take a break the week of the party and then resume our relationship when he gets back. I told him I was kind of uncomfortable with that and he countered that at least he was being honest about what might happen in Vegas. Should I go along with his plan or move on from him? Well, that's entirely up to you. I know that doesn't sound like I'm answering your question, but he was, uh, you know, open and honest with you. I think this is the do-all, end-all time that he's going to do that. This is now the caliber of the guy you're going to get. This is, you know, his character. Uh, I think... You know, I Here's what I would do if I were you. I'd let him go while shopping for another guy, a better guy. This guy's a huge fan. And by the way, in guy world, as a guy, who who is this guy to say that you go to... I'm sorry about this because everybody's going to be mad at me, but this is the way I lived at one point, not now. You go to Vegas and you cheat or lie if that's what's going to happen, and then you come home. You take certain safety precautions for on the on behest of the woman that you love, but you don't ask to take a break because something might happen in Vegas. You go there, and who knows what happens, and you don't tell your girlfriend, and you shut up. So, uh... I don't say you break up with this guy right now today because I never say you should be shopping. You know, don't go, don't shop for food while hungry. Have have a plan. Have this guy in the background if you want while looking for a better deal. And by the way, in all honesty, a better deal is almost any guy who's not dead than this guy. This guy's a punk. I don't like him at all. And I'm glad that you wrote that. And uh, no, don't let him go and say, it's okay. Go sleep with chicks and come back to me and we'll pretend. You know, to be honest with you, I've said that to women. I'm uh, sorry. Um... I've said, why don't we do it? Where the hell was I? I think I was at some, I don't know, but it was some weird time in my life that said, you know, it'd be great for our future if we just let down our, our uh, hands right now and <laughs> could sleep with other people for the next month. I forget where I was going where sex is pretty much insured. And the girl, and by the way, the girl that was with my girlfriend at that time was kind of not a stellar human being. And even she said, are you crazy? We're not, why are you acting single? You're not. So yeah, don't dump this guy till you found somebody better. But if he starts to act up more and bother you, then go ahead and dump him. But don't dump him over this. But on the long run, dump this guy. 800-252-1025. Call that number now. If you've got any kind of problem at all, Danny Bonaducci Life Coach can help you. Remember, you can change your name if you need to. Or just call yourself Steve or Becky. Yeah. And you can also email lifecoach at kzok.com. Cindy and Renton emailed, I've been with my boyfriend for six years. Mm -hmm. We've lived together for five. His daughter is getting married this summer. His ex-wife has let it be known that I will be invited to the wedding, but I am not to appear in any of the wedding photos. Also, I'm not welcome at the rehearsal dinner. I feel slighted. I want to support my boyfriend, but I'm thinking about not attending this wedding. What would you do? Not attend. Uh, fast answer for you. The, you know, it's weird because nobody's being the complete and total jerk here. You know, uh, you are temporary until somebody says that you're married. So, you know, those if you guys just break up because that's the, the commitment you make when you're getting married. People aren't just willy-nilly breaking up anymore. If you've only been uh, relegated to the point of girlfriend, I can see not getting in the family photos because once you, uh, if anything happens, those photos are ruined. Now, I think it's kind of insulting and the reception, I think they're kind of insulting you. So, yeah, I highly suggest don't go. But I also got to say that the ex-wife... Um, is kind of showing her color, saying the new girlfriend is not going to wreck my day. I'm confident enough, and I, I have enough confidence in my family. I think it's cool that he's going by, you know, uh, the reception thing. I don't get while she's saying you couldn't be at the reception. and um, Rehearsal. Rehearsal. Although, yeah, no, I don't see why you're not at the rehearsal. I've done that a couple of times. Um, I, I would not tolerate it, but I wouldn't break up with anybody over it. I think you did the right thing. But yeah, boycott this marriage for sure. And, and you know, there's no reason for you to go and put up with this lady. But she's just being small-minded and weird. She's not being, I don't think she's being super mean. I don't think she's going out of her way to show you disrespect. I wouldn't break up with anybody. I wouldn't start all sorts of drama over this. But yeah, I wouldn't go. And by the way, most of us would prefer not to go to somebody else's wedding anyway. <laughs> I fight for ways to get out of this. So take this as your opportunity to have feelings, your feelings hurt. And don't go, but don't break up with anybody over this. It doesn't call for it. <laughs> When Matt and I got married, we 
uh, one of his cousins was going through a divorce. And so we invited him as a single and not a plus one because he had already started dating some random chick. We're like, we don't want her in our pictures. See? She's not hanging around. That's that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to like send things upside down over this. And he was mad he didn't come to the wedding. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sarah has lived this one and see what happened. <laughs> Weddings, people get so mad so about weddings. So crazy. Yeah, don't go. All right, uh, email for the Life Coach is lifecoach at kzok.com. 800-252-1025 is the phone number. I've got an email here from an anonymous. My best friend since childhood has two teens, a 13-year-old girl and a 14-year-old boy that totally disrespect her and other people too. Okay, I, so let me get this because I, I sometimes I get lost. Her two kids disrespect her, the Best mom. friend. Right. They're her kids, her best disrespect friend's kids. Her. I'm disrespect guessing right mom. in front of this person. Yep. I also have a 13-year-old girl, and thankfully she's very well-behaved, but my problem is that our girls have started to hang out. My friend is really happy about this because she's hoping my good daughter will rub off on her bad daughter. My fear is the opposite. Can this girl that my uh, daughter will pick up her bad behavior? Uh, I know that even the best of kids can be swayed, but what should I do? Well, the, the shorter answer is you should be all right. But absolutely have a talk with your daughter. And when you're done having a talk with your daughter, have a talk with your friend. You guys are vocal about this. She's saying, boy, oh boy, your kids have been so much better raised than mine. I hope my, your kids can rub off on my kids. Well, you want to talk to her about this. See, by the way, I, I'm pleased that you think my daughter's so great that you want to rub off on your daughter. But on the other hand of that, I'm a little nervous that your ill-mattered children are going to rub off on my daughter. Let's let's not, have a talk with your children, which I'm sure she does anyway. Uh, obviously, this woman is, is open to it. And let your daughter know, hey, these kids, their behavior is unacceptable in this. I wouldn't be mean. She hasn't done anything yet. Uh, the, the behavior of these two other kids of uh, Becky's uh, uh, children... That's unacceptable in my home. Please do not bring that kind of disrespect to my door. I won't have it. Having said that, that I think you're smart enough to show that you can go hang out with whoever it is that seems safe and okay for you to hang out with. But don't bring bad behavior un up home to me. I deserve better than that, and so do you. So have at it. But don't forget, the, the first knee-jack reaction is you need to have a talk with their mother. You need to remind her they're, she's aware that they're bad-mannered children, and she needs to get on that. And I think you were smart, smart to notice it. Uh, and I think it... I think I think it'll be okay because your kid is well mattered on purpose. So I think that'll it'll work out in the long run. All right, thank you very much uh, for calling the life coach. That is all the time we have this morning. Uh, life coach brought to you by Goldberg Jones Divorce Man. Call one eight hundred Will. Coming up next. No, not one eight hundred Will. I'm sorry, I noticed that, that there's a Will on here, and it's very. I love this. One uh, eight hundred Divorce. That's uh, Goldberg Jones.